how to YouTube. So I got this Panasonic Toughbook CF31 at the Goodwill Computer Center in Austin. It cost about um, $50 and it actually has some decent specs I think for the price. It has a Sandy Bridge uh, i5 at 3.3 uh, gigahertz I think and it is uh, IP65 rated and it has some sort of drop rating too but I did the obligatory water test and it seems to be pretty durable. I also did the obligatory uh, throw where you throw your tough book and then I did the um, well I put it on the back of my motorcycle I mean this wasn't particularly brutal but you can't really do it with other computers without some sort of case because you'll get it scratched up but this is like solid magnesium or at least I think maybe aluminum I don't know I know the uh, ThinkPad frames use uh, magnesium but I'm not really a tough book expert I, I just kind of wanted one of these systems because they're pretty cool um, wish you could put core boot or Lieber boot on them and I imagine it's a nightmare to take apart and put back together I could be wrong though I haven't I haven't done it yet but I guess uh, to move on to how I installed Linux on here well installing Linux on this is pretty much straightforward you can just go through a normal installer but on a lot of these uh, tough books, the people that do the recycling and reselling won't know how to properly recycle the hard drive caddy. So instead you'll be left with a vacuous hole where the hard drive should be. Which would be fine if the hard drive caddies were cheap, but I think they go for $40 for essentially just something uh, where you put the hard drive in and it's not standard, it's like some weird proprietary part, so you don't really uh, have too many options. I mean that's understandable because I imagine a lot of these did ship with hard drives and I can imagine if the system's designed to take a drop, the uh, hard drive caddy should be pretty, pretty durable and you know managed to kind of try to isolate that shock from the hard disk, but I wish uh, recyclers wouldn't just toss the hard drive caddy and hard drive out together because then you get uh, really high eBay prices for hard drive caddies. So, okay, so as you can tell there's no hard drive in here and it's running um, Linux. So what I did is uh, I use the bootstrap, which is a utility designed for pretty much installing Debian without an installer. You just mount a device and you run dbootstrap in that directory or wherever you specify the directory as, it'll pretty much put a full Debian install in there. And from there you just chroot into it and you can get a nice little installation going on a little USB thumb drive. I don't even think you can see it in there. So pretty much you run parted to make your partition scheme and then you mount the uh, partition, like the root partition or wherever you're just putting your stuff in and then you ch, well you run dbootstrap and then you ch root into it and then from there you need to install kernel and you need to install grub. So after you do that, you look for whatever drivers you're going to need. On the Panasonic Toughbook, you're going to need IWL Wi-Fi because it uses proprietary Intel Wi-Fi. So you just install that and you should get Wi-Fi running on it uh, once you do boot into it. So yeah, I also installed a Zorg, i3, Ranger, sudo, a couple other utilities you might want to have. And I have it mostly set up now, but I haven't copied over all my config files and I haven't installed URXPT and stuff like that. But I have a web browser on here and it seems to be working fine. Um, okay, so I guess now on to um, touchscreen calibration. 
because it doesn't work out of the box. In fact, if it's not if it's set to auto or tablet mode, Debian won't even see the touchscreen. You need to set it to touchscreen mode. It'll boot up and you'll get this touchscreen that looks like it's using about three quarters of the display. He thinks the edges are about here and here, and you can run uh, X input calibrate, which is what you typically have to do to calibrate your touchscreen. But X input calibrate will pretty much give you garbage, or well, not quite garbage, but it's still going to think the screen is three, about uh, three quarters of the size it is. So luckily, I ran into someone with a CF30 on the Arc Wiki that figured out how to do this but his tutorial is a little bit, um, I guess it was more steps than it required. So I was like, I don't, you know, this might, well, so I made a program in C++, it's like 20 lines and it just runs uh, X input calibrate and follows the steps that he came up with to calibrate the touchscreen. But it's a little bit simpler. You don't have to like, Jank, do like janky calculations by hand or anything like, or not by hand, but you don't have to put them in a calculator or something like that. The C++ program will take care of it and it'll give you a X set line that you could run. And you know, if you go through my code or I'll actually link the arc wiki thing too and a GitLab link to the touchscreen calibration thing, but you're still gonna need the uh, X input or yeah, X input calibrate package, and you're going to need to uh, run X set afterwards. But after that, you just uh, compile it. It's uh, like G++, and then there's nothing special. It's like a 20 line program. So just run G++ and the name of the program, and maybe slash O if you want to call it calibrate or something. And then uh, run it, uh, I think. If you don't have Build Essentials installed or G++ isn't found, uh, install Build Essentials. Oh, I forgot to mention, even though this thing is like huge, this is my X200 over there. Just a little size comparison. It uh, has a 1024 by 768 display. It's a little bit awful in terms of resolution, but it's quite bright. And I imagine they did that because it's probably a pretty durable display since this has to be drop rated and stuff. So, but anyways though, uh, have a good one. Bye.